no. So I, here we are. It's a beautiful morning. It's warm. It's what? At least 30 degrees. <laughs> I, have, I have neck gator too. To you know. Make sure we keep warm. So this is Brandon. We're we're taking the uh, GS 1250 and the Multistrada V4S on a two-day ride, an overnight ride, out to the California desert. So we're just getting packed up, getting getting started, ready to go here. I have my uh, packets of emergency so that we keep healthy. <laughs> yeah, he's got all sorts of stuff. He's he's packing here. Are you taking your milk of magnesia? What are you taking, your old man vitamins? I mean, come on. Taking my old man vitamins <laughs> yeah. and my Cialis. Look, look, this is what the man's packing for his trip. He's got one a day. He's got, they have, oh, what is that? Th this is mud water with my pills. This is how you pack for a motorcycle trip. You're like so that 35 you can, years old. What do you so need all this stuff? So you can fit things in there. <laughs> and you need your Cialis so you don't roll out of bed at night. Cialis, all right, well. Look, look what I did. I put on a handlebar bag for him. I gave him chapstick. He's got an inhaler in here. He's already getting ready to like die. Look, I got- I got some Dayquil here. He's got Dayquil. Uh, let's see. I thought else. we were going on a motorcycle ride, not to the oh, hospital. I, <laughs> ibuprofen. <laughs> that's, that's for when he breaks his leg. The only thing that this man is packing <laughs> is a bunch of pills. So what we're kind of trying to do here in a somewhat humorous way, but also in a serious way, is compare the uh, 1250GS, which is kind of the benchmark in this category that I happen to own, with the Multistrada V4S, which is an amazing motorcycle in its own right. Now I'm gonna have a detailed, a full detailed review of the Multistrada on its own, so you should watch that as well. But this is gonna be more of a trip video to see how these bikes compare uh, on a road trip. And we're gonna be switching bikes a lot back and forth uh, to see how this, see what we think between switching between the different bikes. The Multistrada has more horsepower, but the GS has more torque. So it'll be interesting. Let's let's take a look around on the bikes. So this is my personal uh, R1250 GS 2020. It's the HP edition with the gold wheels that make it go faster. Got, False. Uh, yeah, Brandon doesn't like the gold wheels. False. <laughs> well, at least the Multistrada has black wheels. Um, the GPS tires, the Motaz, all sorts of different accessories on it. Uh, Lone Rider, thank you for the tank bag, works really well. Moscomoto, thank you for the backcountry panniers, using those for this trip. The seat cover, um, Zumo XT GPS, quad lock phone mount, you know, all the typical, typical stuff. Alt Rider foot pegs, Alt Rider brake lever, Alt Rider skid plate. You can see the rear tire there, pretty good. Now the Multistrada, so, so I'm carrying like the tools, the extra food, the supplies, tire repair, stuff like that. Because when Brandon rides a motorcycle, he carries nothing except a bottle of Cialis or whatever it is. Um, so, well, you were saying though the hard bag though on this was kind of small. So let's let's look at that. It's, it's pathetic because the pipe runs through the back of it. So yeah, the the exhaust. If you see here, the exhaust um, takes up the room. So in order to make the bag symmetrical, they they had to cut that cut that bag it out. It probably cuts the space down at least in half on the yeah, right. Yeah, so if you saddle. see, yeah. So now from Ducati though, you can get uh, metal boxes. You don't have to get the painted panniers. You can get metal box ones. But this this bike has the- The, the left is good though. The left, the left has, has a lot has of plenty room. of space. So you've got your clothes, your overnight toiletries. Yeah. All your med different various old man medications. That's right. Um, and let's see, you've got some dirty socks, a wallet. Uh, I gave you a Harley Davidson uh, neck roll for keeping warm. Flashlight, it's got his inhaler. I put the Puig visor on this bike because I think um, the windshield, th this bike has the short windshield for some reason. So we'll see how the wind protection compares. Quick question, does your BMW have a heated seat? No. Oh, well my Ducati does. Your Ducati, oh I like how you're always already <laughs> saying it's your Ducati, yeah. Yeah, um, so yeah, I don't have a heated seat, but we both have heated grips. We both have adjustable windshields. You have adaptive cruise control. I shouldn't say you, because we're I'm going to be riding this bike half the time. How are you going to get by without adaptive cruise control? I don't know how I'm going to survive without does, radar adaptive cruise control. Does your motorbike have a blind spot monitor? And also, you have blind spot monitors in the mirrors. I just have old-fashioned mirrors that just operate as a mirror. They just reflect things. You actually have fancy blind spot monitors in yours. Yeah, I don't know how you're gonna get by. Honestly. So how much horsepower does the Ducati have? Is that like 170? 170, and I have to get by with a lowly 134 horsepower of Ooh. this bike. But I have 106 foot pounds of torque, and this bike only has like 94. So I don't know if you're gonna get by with that. 
So we'll have to see. But you do have the heated seat, so that that's That torque's nice. really gonna help get your fat ass moving. <laughs> well, let's go see what kind of riding gear Brandon is wearing. So what, what kind of fancy riding gear are you using on this on this epic journey? We are running the Tourmaster mesh pants with a Mesh liner pants in the now. middle of winter, yeah. You have a liner in your, oh, they have like a, a, a drop, a waterproof drop yeah. liner thing, okay. So he's wearing mesh gear in the middle of winter. I'm sure that'll be good. And then look at this. I haven't I haven't had one of these for a long time. So if we have a crash, you'll be killed. But, you know, it's funny. I just slipped my riding gear on. It was really simple. I didn't have to do all that. Well, not everybody's sponsored by all of the uh, <laughs> motorcycle gear makers. I'm not sponsored some of, by some anything. Some of us have to work for a living and buy our own things. <laughs> We really need to get on the road here, so I'm going to try to motivate Brandon here by making fun of him. Uh, and let's get on the road and get this trip started. All right, so we're about to leave. I'm going to show Brandon, uh, just kind of orient him on the Ducati. He's familiar with the GS because he's I've had a lot of GSs. He's ridden my GSs before. So I'm going to show him real quick uh, the Ducati, but I figured I'd show you guys too. Okay, so here's what you need to know on the Ducati. So it's a keyless bike, so we're going to keep the key in this cubby here so that when we switch bikes, we don't have an issue with the transponder. Um, the gas cap does need a key for when we get gas. And we're gonna track our fuel mileage on this trip too, to see, because a lot of people, a lot of people are worried about the fuel economy on the Ducati in the range. We're gonna test that today and tomorrow. So you, the ignition switch, you have to uh, turn it here. Okay, so you just turn that to the left and it cycles the ignition on and off. Once the ignition's on, then of course you've got, you've got the sliding switch here for stop start. And then the start button, the start button is there. That light button doesn't seem to do anything, so I don't know why it's there. Heated grip button is a hard button up here, okay? So heated grips, uh, you'll see it come up um, on the screen there. So three bars is, is high uh, there. And then on your left controls, you've got turn signals horn. This is the menu controller, up, down, enter, okay? Uh, cruise control on off to the left up and down here and it's it's in adaptive cruise control mode And I'll show you how that works separately suspension. You don't need to mess with that ride mode button, which I'll show you here in a second So actually, let me show you the riding modes first So to, to change see how it says here uh, Try to get this on camera. Okay, so you need to pay attention to know how this works So the riding mode button is here now to change the mode you have to click mode and then you have to go up and down with the controller. And I, I'll tell you right now, you're going to confuse the turn signal and this when you're riding, but you'll get used to it. So to change it, you can scroll up and down, enduro, urban, sport, touring. And they what they have is traction control, ABS, wheelie control, suspension settings. But it's set up pretty well the way it is, so I would, I would just use the modes as they are. Start in touring mode. Um, urban mode is softer. See how it says engine low power in, tu in urban mode? Enduro is low power, touring is medium. It's full engine power, it's just less throttle response, so it's kind of misleading how they say that. And then uh, sport is engine high, which is the most aggressive throttle response, but it's the same horsepower in sport and touring, as far as I know. So we'll go to touring for now. Now to select the mode, you have to then push this in um, until it flashes and then it goes back to here. Now to control the control, so you see you've got two sets of kind of information here on the dash. So right now you're right now the upper one is selected because you've got this box around it so you can go up down. So what I have here, um, hold on. So here you can control adaptive cruise control, music, phone, heated seat. So to like to turn the heated seat on, you press it and then you can select high low things like that. And then to go back, you just hold the left button. Now to get down to these controls here, you hold down the menu controller and see how now this is selected here. So you can scroll through your trip information. So we're getting 16 miles a gallon, which is because I came up the hill from the gas station. So that's the basics of how it works. Um, any questions? It's all clear as mud, right? We want max power. That's max all that power. matters. <laughs> Full power. All right. Well, what do you say we just get riding and get to our first gas stop, and then we're going to fuel up and start tracking the fuel mileage? Well, with 170 horsepower, uh, I think we'll be stopping quite a bit. <laughs> no, because it's got a big fuel tank. It's got... Uh, the, the Ducati has a 5.8 gallon or 22-liter, um, 23-liter fuel tank. 
The GS has a 5.3 liter, 20 liter fuel tank, but it gets better mileage. So I think the range will be about the same, but we need to go, so let's get riding. It is so nice to be back on my 1250 GS. I absolutely adore this bike. That's why after I sold my GS Adventure, I ended up buying another one. I decided to go for the standard bike this time. I haven't been able to ride this bike in like probably a month because I've been doing all the uh, videos with the Touareg, that video series. I've been testing the Multistrada, the other, other bikes that I've had for test. And we had some winter weather because it is winter here in the mountains. So it's good to get this thing out on a, on a ride for a couple days. We're gonna switch off bikes, of course, so Brandon can spend more time with the 1250. He, Brandon is actually planning to buy a 1250 GS because he's ridden a lot of different bikes too, and this is one of his favorite bikes he's ever ridden, so he's planning to buy one, but I'm interested to see how he feels about the Multistrada V4 because that's a really strong competitor to this bike. But there's definitely something to be said for how refined, overall refined, the 1250 GS still is. I mean, even though this platform basically goes back to 2013, this water-cooled boxer, the 1250 motor was a big improvement. They changed the electronics, but they did such a good job with the chassis and the handling and the weight distribution and the throttle response. Everything is just so incredibly smooth and easy to ride. And the engine has a ton of torque. It's just a bike that you want to spend all day riding. It just encourages you to ride all day long in, in an incredibly comfortable way. It's just... It's not like any other bike I've ridden. It's it's just it's the most comfortable bike for long distance riding that I've ever tested or, or owned. And then when you want to get after it, dude, this engine is powerful and just has a monster amount of torque. I mean, 106 foot pounds of torque is just, <laughs> it's so good. The Multistrada definitely is faster, but you have to rev the engine up more to really get into that power with that V4. But man, when you do, it's it's incredible. So Brandon's been riding the Multistrada to start the ride. Um, Brandon, what are your first impressions of this thing? So adaptive cruise, amazing. I, I can't believe that this is where we're at with motorcycles now. Um, the, the mirrors are actually a little buzzy. Um, How's the power? You know, the, the torque is a bit softer than the GS, but you can tell it's got a good top end. You know, we haven't had a chance to really uncork them, but we'll see later on. I'm sure it won't disappoint. Yeah, once you get the Ducati motor wound up towards Redline, things get exciting real fast. So, so we topped up the, uh, we brimmed up our tanks and we're gonna track our fuel mileage. So let's get onto the next leg of this journey here. You know what, my first impression of changing bikes is that it doesn't have that kind of smooth, floaty, like, feeling of the GS. Like, it rides a little firmer, uh, but the engine, the engine's not as smooth at low RPM, but my God, if you, if you do this. <laughs> the GS doesn't give me that chuck, it doesn't give me that giggle, that grin factor. Holy shit. So the computer on the Ducati says I have a range of 223 miles. We just fueled up. I think the BMW said it had like 250 or something like that. So they're not too far off, you know. One thing that Brandon told me about the Ducati, he's like, oh, the engine chugs a little bit at low RPM. So here's what he's talking about. Oh, there's another Multistrada. Um, so I've got it at six gear at 50 miles an hour. So below 3,500 RPM, basically what happens is 
if you open the throttle like below 4,000 RPM, it kind of the engine kind of vibrates. It kind of like makes the whole bike shake. You can even see the dashboard kind of shake. So let me do that again. So see, it doesn't it doesn't like that. It doesn't really like to be run at the low RPMs. The GS doesn't have that, right? It's just that Boxer 1250 engine is so smooth. It just doesn't have that issue. It's not a problem with the Ducati whatsoever. It's just something. It's just something that's different. And you know, to keep this engine happy, it wants to be doing that. It just wants to be screaming and just flying <laughs> for it to really be happy. So we're testing the adaptive cruise control if it follows another motorcycle and it does so it detects the motorcycle like any other vehicle and it's able to keep the distance that I set there's four different distance levels one through four and I have it on number two so it's following um, it's following Brandon here on the GS now that he's pulled over there it's gonna speed back up you see now if I pull in behind him like this what's gonna happen is watch the motorcycle slow down and apply brakes on its own i'm not, i didn't do that so the throttle i'm not touching the throttle now it's going to keep me behind him uh and match match his speed at the distance i set if i want to go closer i hit minus and it speeds up and we'll follow him closer so we'll get this on the freeway too but i mean this system is pretty damn impressive how well it works so see now he's slowing down and it's it's just pacing him like this now if i if i go around him the system is automatically going to accelerate. So now we're on the freeway. Uh, I just feel like if this bike had a wider windshield and taller, it would be way better. I don't know why it has this short accessory windshield on it. That's not what most of these come with, so it's kind of weird. So it's kind of windy. You can probably hear kind of a lot of the wind buffeting and stuff like that. On the freeway, the Multistrada is very smooth. It likes to travel at these higher speeds. So at uh, 83 miles per hour, uh, it's about 5,400 RPM to give you a sense of, uh, of where the revs are. And there's the engine is extremely smooth at this speed. Also, I really like the blind spot monitors. It works just like the Triumph Tigers that I've tested that has these. So when the vehicle is in a blind spot or next to you, the little thing on the mirror lights up very bright. It's very noticeable. I think it's an amazing feature. I love having it on a motorcycle personally. One thing I do notice and the Brandon noticed as well is that the mirrors buzz a little bit on this bike. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not a huge deal, but they do have a little bit of vibration at certain RPMs in the mirrors. couple observations I've been having about the Multistrada we're we're almost 100 miles into our day so far so doing pretty well uh, I've been riding the Multistrada for more than half of it and uh, the quick shifter I man I love the quick shifter on this bike I, we just went through a lot of traffic lights in town and I was just lipping through the gears up and down all the way gears one through six both up and down because it's such a pleasure to use on this bike on the GS the quick shifter can be a little bit clunky um, especially at the lower rpms but quick shifter on a Ducati is really amazing uh, we did that freeway stretch I did notice kind of a lot of wind noise I, I again I just think it's that windshield that that could be improved uh, the heated grips on this bike work really well they've got uh, three different heating levels um, so they work great the heated seat has actually been really nice too it sounds like one of those things that <coughs> That you wouldn't really use but let me tell you you end up using it it's really nice to have all right we're making our first pit stop of the day we've been riding for two or three hours and of course look where we are we're in our natural habitat for riding a bmw and ducati so you know that works out what do you think of our first pit stop here yeah this is exactly what a ducati and bmw rider need you need a <laughs> macchiato bmw macchiato 
So we're gonna get some reduced fat soy lattes with half calf or oat something milk. like that. Oat, oat milk, milk. oat milk, he says. So yeah, uh, we're gonna go inside and maybe have some discussion about the bikes uh, over some coffee. All right, so we just wanted to share some kind of initial thoughts as we have our coffee here. So um, what, are, what are your basic thoughts? You've, we've switched bikes back and forth, you know. You know, one of the things that I found really compelling about the Ducati was its quick shifter. I think it has one of the smoothest that I've ever experienced just in those low speed upshift kind of situations where you find most uh, bikes are real clunky. That one's really nice. I like it. Yeah, I, I was commenting on that in my narration. The quick shift on a Ducati is amazing. It's way better than a GS. The GS yeah. is kind of clunky, right? Yeah. The, the whole gear shift and quick shift are a little bit. But what about like comfort and kind of we rode on a freeway and stuff like that? I you mean, know, I think I found the riding position of the Ducati actually a little bit more comfortable. Um, I think the bars are just a little bit closer to the rider. It has a nice position. We don't yeah. have any what do you think about the difference in the engines though? I mean, very different. You know, very. You've got a boxer engine with a lot of torque and then you've got the V4 with kind of emphasizes horsepower more. I mean, which engine do you, do you have a preference so far in the engine? Um, you know, when we're just lugging around like this around town and, and low speed, I think I kind of prefer the BMW. It's a little bit more tractable at low RPM. Um, th there's a little bit of shutter in the Ducati at the lower RPM, but I think that's just the character of the V4, you know, it wants to be revved out and it wants to be ridden hard. Uh, the, but the BMW is a great bike at low speed, lots of torque, real smooth. Yeah, well, I think he's, I think he nailed it so far. So we'll uh, finish our coffee and get back on the road. So we keep switching off bikes. It's kind of interesting to keep switching bikes to feel the differences. We were just uh, at the last stop, we were talking about the suspension differences. You know, the BMW, you feel almost nothing when you have it in a soft suspension setting. It's so smooth, it just floats down the road like a cloud. The Ducati, you know, you feel the road more, which is good when you're trying to ride sporty, but when you're just trying to tour, I think the BMW is a little more comfortable with the suspension. Um, so yeah, we're just getting some cool footage out here. Beautiful day. It's like one o'clock, something like that. So trying to get some miles down so we don't have to stay out here after dark. The, the highway acceleration of the Multistrada V4 is pretty insane. I mean, let this engine ring out. Oh my God, this thing will, the horizon starts to uh, get, to just turn to a blur. That's just incredible. <laughs> that never gets old. So we're in uh, famous Amboy with the uh, Roy's Motel sign and stuff. I can't believe Brandon's never been here. So you've really never been here? I've never been to Amboy. Well, what do you think? 
Uh, I think I better buy some property here quickly. It's, it's really <laughs> getting crowded. So when you come to Amboy, you gotta stop and get a, a route beer. I'll show you what I mean here. It's not root beer, it's route beer. There you go. How clever is that, right? Route 66 root beer. Then uh, why didn't you get a root beer? Try and cut back. Cut back, yeah. Cut back on the root beer. <laughs> So we had that little stop in Amboy there and back on the GS again. I put the visor on the GS, took it off the Ducati, and it totally made this bike super quiet. No more wind buffeting. It's amazing the difference that thing makes. It just shoots the wind up over your head and my helmet's not shaking anymore. It's also better for filming with the camera because you don't have the wind noise as much. Uh, another thing I like about the GS, which I kind of forgot about, is because I've got these big crash bars, I can put my legs out on the crash bar is kind of like highway pegs to stretch out so when you're riding for eight or nine or ten hours a day you know or even if you're just riding four or five hours it's nice to have a place to sort of stretch your legs out like that super comfortable um, and I can't do that on a Ducati on the Ducati you probably could like put some highway pegs on those crash bars it might work but the GS is just really well suited to this. I Overall, I just like the design of the Boxer engine. There's a lot of things I like about it, about the Boxer, and we'll talk about some of those a little bit later in this, in this video. I've got my camera mounted on that one, so it's a little bit harder to do, but I can also, well, no, I can still do it. I can put my leg there and uh, stretch out. I, actually, this bike is so incredibly stable that I can just ride like this. I don't even actually need my hands on the bars. I'm not recommending that you ever do that. It's not a good idea. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've done this for longer periods of time than I, would, than I would like to admit. But it's actually just the way this bike tracks down the road is so incredibly stable and comfortable. And I will keep re reiterating the fact that there's no other motorcycle in the world, period, that I would rather ride on all day touring rides than a BMW GS. They're just, I've just never found one that I've liked as much for, for touring as this bike. And that Ducati, that Ducati's damn good. It's, it's really just as good as this and in some ways better. But I think, I think for touring, I, I still kind of prefer the GS. So we're jumping on the 40 freeway for a little bit. 76 miles an hour actual speed. The uh, GS is only at 4,500 RPM. It's a very relaxed motor. And it's so nice if you have to do this all day long and just crush miles. This bike is amazing for that. The other thing I've been noticing compared to the Ducati is the mirrors on the BMW, they almost never have any buzz in them. So you always have a crystal clear view out the mirrors. Whereas on the Ducati, you definitely get um, you definitely get quite a bit of buzz at, at a lot of a lot of different speeds that you might be riding at. So we're gonna uh, get off the freeway in five or ten miles and then uh, we're going to do some off-roading. We're going to do some dirt roads and uh, see how these bikes do in the dirt. So let's hit it. Okay, we're here in the middle of uh, the desert in California getting gas. I got to show you the fuel price though. It's very affordable. Eight dollars. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to put my credit card in again though because I'm probably going to hit the limit here just trying to fill this thing. And this is the USA, not Europe. Eight dollars and 19 cents for premium. Wow. I see why she warned us in Amboy that it was getting a little bit expensive in Goffs. It's making Amboy look like a deal at $7. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, fill up both bikes and hand calculate our fuel mileage. We have about 180 miles on these gas, on this tank. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see the difference. You know, I think what we're figuring out though is that Ducati uses about 10% more gas, but it has a 10% larger gas tank. So it kind of has the same range as a 1250 GS, not the GS Adventure, but, but the standard GS like I'm riding. Um, so yeah, our, our, com the our, place as before. our computers, we both got a low fuel light a few miles ago. Um, our range is, was around, showing around 220 miles or something like that, 200 miles maybe. I did notice that uh, above about 75, it seems to really start drinking a lot more fuel. 
Yeah, above 75, I think on all vehicles, motorcycles, cars, there seems to be some sort of a physics thing where you start to use way more fuel. It's not a linear relationship. It uses more above 75 than below 75. Of like, course, we're only you know. going at those higher speeds in Mexico. Yeah, we never, yeah. yeah. So I used 4.192 gallons and you used 4.361. 4.361. Um, my That's not a huge difference. We went 181.5 miles. I don't know what the BMW is saying. So 181.5. Did you calculate hand calculate that? I, I did. So it's showing right at about 41.6 miles per gallon. And the computer says 41. So, so that's it's damn pretty close. accurate. That's damn accurate. Yeah. Okay. Now on the uh, GS. So I got to calculate the GS here. So do that. Do that for me in the phone. Uh, same mileage. So we'll do 181.5 here. And that was... 4.192. 4.192. Okay. And the grand total is... 43.296. So about 43.3. .3. So I got 43.3. You got 41. 41.6. It's not much difference. No. So, so fuel mileage is within... 5%. 1.3 miles per gallon difference. Yeah, then Ducati, the Ducati has a slightly larger tank, so our range is around 200 miles, basically. When you're doing the short, the short story is, you know, highway miles. speeds, yeah. Yeah, and it drops down at the highway speed, so we're gonna get out and uh, do some uh, do some dirt riding. And hopefully, it's not too rough. I told Brandon that it's only 10 miles, but it's probably like 30 or 40 miles, and it could be sandy or washed out. He doesn't look too happy with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> he, do, he doesn't like off-roading on adventure bikes, you can tell. Too big. So, yeah, too heavy, he look, says. And, and look at this great tire for dirt, too. Yeah, yeah we have really good off-road tires, you can tell here. Um, well, I do, actually. But you're, you're screwed. Well, actually, I'm going to ride the Ducati when we get them to the dirt. He's getting rather amorous with, with the Multistrada. <laughs> Here's a little headlight comparison for you. So I would say the Ducati has more light and also the Ducati has an adaptive headlight, um, whereas my GS doesn't. Now in 2021 and 22, uh, the GS has had an adaptive headlight, but I still think that Ducati's light